So what are the best games to play on the brand new Atari 2600 Plus? Well, this is my list of my top 30. And you might be surprised by the gems that I pick. Get ready, guys. This is going to be a fun one. Welcome to that Atari show. Ballistic Coffee Boy here, your host. So since we last talked, guys, there's been a lot going on in the Atari world, as you know. Um, just, gosh, so much. So um, here recently, we found out that Atari and PlayOn um, are going to be releasing the Atari uh, 400 Mini, which is a mini computer based on the 400 Atari computer out in 1979. Uh, which is awesome. So this is like, you know, 45 years ago. Crazy. I was three when it came out. So, um, but I'm, I'm just really looking forward to the Atari 400 mini. Um, it's going to be so cool. Um, can't wait. And it's also for sale in Europe. We found out, which is awesome. Um, I also wanted to let you know, uh, other cool news, uh, the My Arcade Atari devices that we talked about. Um, a little more information came out. The Atari Game Station Portable um, now is going to have a kickstand, kind of like um, the Nintendo Switch. And um, uh, it's just going to be awesome. It's also kind of like the Retro Champ, which My Arcade had out a few years ago, which played NES and um, it. it also played Famicom cartridges and the other side. Um, it looks kind of similar to that on the back to me, but uh, it's definitely going to be a cool devices. Now, we also found out these are going to have SD card compatibility, which is amazing, and I can't wait for that. So um, anyway, just wanted to get that news out of the way. Just some cool stuff coming up there. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about it on Atari Newsline this episode of that Atari show. Also coming up, guys, I'm going to be talking about my... 30 favorite Atari 2600 games. I have so many favorite Atari 2600 games, you guys. And these are great for the Atari 2600 Plus, which I'm also still covering. Um, just fantastic games, classic ones you really have to get, plus a couple of, of personal favorites. So I can't wait to bring that to you. And, of course, the news and a podcast blast. We also have some more information about another episode um, for Ferg's Atari 2600 Game by Game podcast, the Antic 8-Bit Computer podcast, and much, much more. All right. So stay tuned, guys, to Atari Newsline. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you're having a great new year. Welcome to Atari Newsline. Ballistic Coffee Boy here, your host. So this time on Atari Newsline, I want to talk about um, a couple of awesome things. So many of you know that My Arcade had out their uh, their four new systems again. Well, they announced them, and I think they're coming Q4 2024. Now, there's the Game Station Portable, which is getting a lot of attention, and that's because it basically um, is, is not the same 
thing it was. This is the portable. And it looks kind of like the Switch, from my understanding. It has a flap on the back, kind of like the My Arcade Retro Champ, which I also reviewed on my channel, which is awesome. It plays NES games in one side and Famicom in the other, and it is great. So um, check out the uh, Super Champ as well. So the Game Station Portable, I'm real excited about. All of these new Atari products, I've come to find out, are going to have S uh, micro SD card uh, slots so you can load whatever you want that's great you can say whatever you want hopefully um, so I'm excited about this let me know what you think down below the next huge story is the 400 mini the Atari 400 mini computer um, this is put out by uh, retro games limited I think and play on an Atari um, I put in my pre-order on Amazon already go check out Amazon hopefully they still have pre-orders up um, um, fantastic. I can't wait to get this. So it's backwards compatible, um, right? It plays 400 Atari computer games, 800. So the 800 XL and all that stuff, One the uh, um, 130 XE, I believe as well, and the XEGS. It also plays Atari 5200 games. So now we're going to have a compatibility to play, or the we're going to have the opportunity to play every Atari game pretty much from their main consoles, right? I would love to see a Lynx 2.0 handheld, and I would love to see Atari Jaguar Mini as well. Let me know what you think down below. Um, so lots of cool stuff coming up. I also wanted to let you know, and I reported this on my channel, G Fuel partnered with Atari uh, to make um, an Atari collector's box for their sports drink company. And this is a pretty popular company. Um, so they had a contest out on Twitter slash X. Um, and guess you won. I won. So I won this freaking awesome collector's box that's got a keychain with it. It's got a 2600 cardboard box it's in, right? It's got um, a cool tumbler with a joystick on top, all kinds of cool stuff. And the flavors are named after the 2600 plus, I believe, and some other things, asteroids. So I'm really excited to get this. I'll definitely be reporting about it on my channel soon. Uh, so let me know down below what you guys think about all this awesome news. Um, this really opens the floodgates, right? It opens the floodgates for Atari to make a Jaguar Mini or a 800 XL Mini. Um, and I and the opportunities are endless pretty much. Now, this 400 is, is compatible with everything pretty much in the Atari APA computer world. It'd be cool to have an ST Mini as well so we could play some of the ST games that are way more graphically um, intense and more fun games, in my opinion, because they're more advanced. And um, I would love to see that. Um, I'm also curious if there's actually BASIC on this 400 Mini. I haven't heard mention of that. The C64 Mini, which I reviewed on my channel, also takes a wireless keyboard, and you can program on the thing. And I would love to be able to program on this. So let me know, Atari, if that's a possibility. I would love to have maybe a BASIC card out and a keyboard. That would be so neat. Because this thing does take a wireless keyboard, and you can load your own ROMs in it. So, uh, all kinds of cool news, guys. Let me know what you think down below. Obviously, this is emulation. It's nothing too crazy. Um, for the price point, 120 bucks. I think it's a great deal. So, go pre-order the Atari 400 Mini, and let me know if you're going to be pre-ordering the Meyer Cave products later on this year. They look pretty cool, too.
Hey guys, I wanted to give a quick update as well on my channel. Um, so I've opened up memberships for BCB um, because it was available. Um, I'm not expecting everyone to go do this, but it's a cool way to support me and my channel. <clears throat> so the content is always free, but if you want to, uh, you can go and uh, become a member of BCB. There are three levels. There's Solo Espresso, Dopio Espresso, and Triple Espresso. Dopio is 99 cents a month. Um, Dopio is $1.99 a month, and Triple is $2.99 a month. And, um, you know, as far as perks go, um, you are entered into a contest every month for a free Atari 2600 or 7800 cart of my choosing. These are probably going to be duplicates I have, maybe a rare one tossed in every now and then, so definitely check it out. Um, also, I'm going to be having coffee mugs for my channel pretty soon, hopefully. I'm um, looking to, to selling those just to supplement um, and offset some of the cost of making this, upgrade my equipment, stuff like that. Um, so, uh, but even if you don't subscribe, I appreciate, I'm sorry, even if you don't become a member, I appreciate you so much for subscribing and watching uh, BCB and that Atari show and Atari Newsline. Um, also some channel updates, my life's getting busy, so cutting back on some of my content, but your favorites are not going anywhere. So you'll always see that Atari show every other Monday. You'll see Atari Newsline as a breaking Atari news drops and breaks. And uh, and also, uh, Expresso will still be on the channel, as well as No Filter HD when I play new Atari VCS games. So stay tuned for that, and check out the memberships if you're interested. I appreciate you guys so much from the bottom of my heart. It means so much to me that you support me. Um, I just want you all to know that. And you don't have to become a member to support me. Just at least subscribe. Thank you so much, guys. For this book note, guys, I want to talk about two cool books that are the same. <laughs> I didn't realize I had two of these, and I'm not sure if I've talked about this book before, but I'm doing this for a reason. So stay tuned at the end of this, and you'll find out why. Um, so I want to talk about Your Atari Computer, A Guide to Atari 400-800 Personal Computers by Ion Poole, I'm um, sorry, Ion Poole with Martin McNiff and Stephen Cook. So we've seen some of these authors before, for sure. Um, the back of this says, uh, here's an invaluable all-in-one guide for Atari 400-800 computer users. The authors provide complete operating instructions and troubleshooting tips on hardware, peripherals, and compatible software. Plus, there are two chapters devoted solely to the superb Atari computer graphics capabilities. For beginning programmers, there are tutorials in Atari Basic, plus instructions for use of color graphics and sound. For more experienced programmers, the book provides a comprehensive reference of basic statements and functions. Everything you need to unlock the full power of your Atari computer is contained in these pages. So, pretty cool. Um, like I said, I may have talked about this book before, but I chose it for a reason. Um, and uh, this came out in 82 by McGraw-Hill. Um, it's got some very cool chapters in it. The Atari 810 disk drive, um, Atari printers, the program recorder, advanced basic programming. Love it. Um, programming in basic and going backwards. How to operate the Atari computer and presenting the Atari personal computers. And they talk about the 800, the cassettes, the extra RAM, all that cool stuff. I love that this has pictures in it as well. Um, and uh, advanced graphics, um, basic statements and functions, memory usage. I find this to be a really comprehensive book. Um, and uh, so I wanted to tell you I've got a second copy of this. Now these are tattered no near mint condition or whatever but um i want to give away probably the worst looking copy of these two probably this one <laughs> so sorry guys so uh if you would like your atari computer if you would like me to send this to you uh there's a little contest here that's going to last about a week so this will last until january um 22nd i guess at noon so uh 2024 so if you're watching this go ahead and comment down below um about what you like about atari computers i want this to go to an atari computer user um so drop me a note down there tell me what you like about atari computers and in, in general right specifically atari for computers it doesn't have to be 400 or 800 it could be any other computers but um if you comment down below about that um i'll do i'll just pick randomly um as i've done with the app i use on my computer um and i'll pick a random winner and um and then i will uh go ahead and 
um, if you do that, if you leave a comment down there um, about your favorite um, things about Atari computers um, or your favorite Atari computer, if you will go ahead and um, give me, go ahead and shoot me an email as well to that Atari show at alec.com if you want to enter the contest. Um, so do that as well as, as the comment. And uh, what I'll do is I'll just pick a random winner to win this book. So uh, it's a cool book. And I really feel like with the Atari 400 Mini coming out, I really hope it comes with some room basic that you can use and program in, that, like the C64 Mini that I reviewed a while back with, with Adam. Um, but this is a cool book to really get into basic programming on the Atari computers, really step-by-step -step and also some comprehensive stuff. Um, so as I said, if you want to win a copy of this, leave a comment down below. Tell me what you like about Atari computers. Also email me at that Atari show at alec.com with your information. Um, just how I can get a hold of you if you win. All right. So, um, cause I, I don't want you to leave stuff down below where everyone can see it. So, um, really cool book. I like it. Um, it is about, uh, 450 something pages pretty neat. So I've got two copies, as I said, and I would love to give one away. Um, also, um, I'm excited to cover the Atari 400 Mini. Um, next episode, I'm going to be going down that rabbit hole some more with you, reading everything I know about it, and kind of talking about its capabilities, what it comes with, um, what might able to be modded on it. So um, I'll talk about that next episode of that Atari show in two weeks. So definitely stay tuned for that and enter the contest for these books. If you would like, um, I'll give one of them away. Um, I just want it to be someone, as I said, that appreciates Atari computers like I do. Thank you guys. For this homebrew section, guys, I want to refer to Zero Page Homebrew. They have some fantastic content, as many of you know. Uh, on Atari Age, I stumbled across this. Atari 2600 Homebrew Games release completed work and progress in 2024. They say below is a list of all the Atari 2600 Homebrew Games that have either been physically released, completed, or have released and updated WIP in 2024. Please let me know if there are any missing or inaccurate entries. Note, games are only added to the list if there is a playable binary or video of the game. So physical release, we have uh, Figo Bayo, which is 4K. Um, there's some information here on that. Pretty cool. You can download it. Uh, 2023, um, which came out January 9th, 2024. Completed, we have Bomb Barrage, Bombs Away, Cave Raider, Gate Racer, Monkey Drop, and Primate Plunge. Work in progress, we have Boulder Dash 2, Button, Catch, Flip It's, Fly Hunter, Laser Face Planet, Minotaur, and Police Car. Other platforms here, we have some lists here. Um, and at the very bottom, they've added some more um, information to the games. And he describes whenever these were added, um, or they describe when they were added. So pretty cool. So there's an ongoing list here, and there's one out every year that they kind of put out. Definitely check that out if you're interested in homebrews. Also check out my good friends Retro Bliss Gaming and Mike's Gaming Gala. And I wanted also to say here a huge congratulations to Mike's Gaming Gala for winning YouTuber of the Year. As many of you know, he beat me out in my month when I was voted for the second time in or nominated for the second time for YouTuber of the Month. I didn't win. Mike's Gaming Gala won. He nominated my nominations, which is amazing. And now he's gone on to win YouTuber of the Year. So congratulations, Mike's Gaming Gala. Didn't seem like I had any chance the year before and this year since both of my people went on to become YouTuber of the Year. Pretty crazy. Um, so... Anyway, let me know what you guys think about this. Uh, pretty neat. Um, definitely check out Zero Page Homebrew for all the latest homebrew information. They really have the lottery with all this. And it's, it's pretty amazing uh, that they keep this updated and accurate. So definitely check it out. For this podcast blast, guys, I wanted to let you know that Ferg has a new Atari 2600 uh, podcast out, and this time it's for Frogger 2 3 Deep, and um, it is an awesome game. Now, me and my friend Adam did leave feedback on this um, with um, our friend Ryan. Um, really cool game, uh, for sure. I want to read you what Ferg has here really quickly. Um, this came out um, January 4th. Uh, 11th looks like he says happy new year thank you 
so much for welcoming me back to the podcasting world so warmly. I am very grateful to all of you. The first game for 2024 is Frogger 2 3D by Parker Brothers. What does this game have to do with the barn and main? Oh, you are going to find out, believe me. Next up on the show will be Alpha Beam with Ernie by Atari and CTW. So um, I am reviewing this game right now for Ferg. Check out that episode, which is going to air probably in the next week or so, I guess. Um, Ferg is a fantastic podcaster. I love his podcast. Um, I've been talking about him here recently because he's come back after a long hiatus. He's been ill, so uh, please stop by and give him your well wishes and wa- and listen to his podcast. It's amazing. There are so many seasons worth to listen to. You won't run out, believe me, and they're all great. Thank you, Ferg. So we also have some really cool new podcasts out from the Atari uh, Antic Apic podcast. And uh, there's been a couple episodes since we last talked. One was an interview out December 18, 2023. Uh, with Rodrigo Castro talking about Atari and Chile. And uh, pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> he says here, uh, Rodrigo Castro is one of the organizers of an Atari Expo that took place July 22nd, 2023 in Santiago, Chile. He told me it was probably the largest um, Atari show in that country to date, with an estimated 300 attendees. Panelists included Robert Jaeger, uh, creator of Montezuma's Revenge, who attended via video conference. Rod and I talked about that event as well as Atari's popularity in Chile in this interview that took place on December 15, 2023. And uh, there's a video here from Atari uh, Expo in Chile in 2023, some Chilean Atari magazine and newsletter scans, and much more. Uh, I also wanted to say Robert Yeager um, has also been here on that Atari show uh, twice now, and he's an amazing dev. Please check him out. Um, he did Montezuma's Revenge as well as others, and really cool guy. Uh, so that's pretty awesome. So Antic also had an episode out January 8th called You're Gonna Label Me a Failure. This is episode 104. It says here, in this episode of Antic, the Atari Ape Computer Podcast, K plays with Pokey the AI chatbot some more. K's cut um sorry, K's cat tries to smack Randy in the head. We discuss what happens if we don't meet our interview goals. Hint, Randy will be labeled a failure, and we bring you all the Atari Ape news from the last month of 2023. So uh, pretty neat. So definitely check this out. Uh, very cool podcast as well. Um, and I know you'll love it too if you, if you uh, try it. So give it a listen, guys. Hey, guys. BCB here. So uh, for this feature... I'm going to be playing some of my favorite Atari 2600 and 7800 games on the 2600 Plus. Um, now, I did have um, a, a review out for the 2600 Plus. Go check that out. I am featuring just a few of the same games in this uh, rundown just because they're some of my favorites, right? I picked uh, random games for that, uh, 30 random games for my review, plus the games the system came with. Um, and. Uh, the extra cards I ordered from Atari. So this time I'm taking a look at 30, that's right, three zero uh, games for the 2600 plus, I think you would enjoy. Now, this is not my usual filming area, uh, but I got my 2600 uh, CX40 joystick here hooked up. And um, I just want to show you my, now this is no setup to be proud of. I just, this is how I record, so it's messy. So as you can see, um, this is kind of my recording area, my Evercade stuff, and my, my TV is right over here, as you can see. My huge TV and my Switch, of course, all that good stuff. My VCS is next to the Switch. So, um, just wanted to kind of give you, to kind of show you what I'm dealing with. So, here's my computer with OBS Studio running, and there's my 2600 Plus back here, um, which is not on yet. Um, now it is. You can see the logo glowing back there. But um, I freaking love the 2600 Plus. It is a great system. I highly recommend it to everyone. It's good for casual gamers and collectors like myself that have some carts. I've got about 300 or 400. Um, so I'm excited to get to these games that I enjoy. Now, there are um, most of the games are new that I did not feature in my review. There, there's a good handful that I talked about in the review, such as uh, Berserk Enhanced and Mr. Run and Jump. And I had to include those because of, of their significance to the system. But um, So let's go ahead and get started. I can't freaking wait. Here we go. So let's go ahead and dive into these 30 games, guys. Uh, so Mr. Run and Jump came out in 2023. It's Atari's first 
published 2600 game, I believe in like 40 years or something. This is an awesome platformer. Um, it is light on the sound, but it's great on the uh, little traps that you come across. Really fun game. I really enjoy it. There's also a modern uh, version on the VCS and all major consoles as well. Check that one out too. Just really great. So the next game I want to play for you is Sequest by Activision. Activision, of course, made some awesome games. Um, just fantastic. And this one, you're rescuing these little mermaids. Uh, once you get five or six, you go to the top and get bonus points. Pretty neat. So the next game I want to play is Solaris. This is an awesome game, you guys. Definitely check it out for the 2600 plus. Um, it is a classic game. Just a nice little space shooter um, with lots of elements, uh, some 3D looking elements as well whenever you're traversing planets. Um, just a really cool game. I really enjoyed playing it on this and it really, I recorded like 25 minutes of footage and couldn't include it all, so that's how much I like it. So the next game, you guys, and either, these are in no particular order, is Secret Quest by Axlon. Now this game on the back of the box says that uh, Nolan Bushnell advised on this game back in the day and after he'd been, out, been out away from Atari for a while. This is a cool little dungeon crawler, definitely. Um, this came out in like 89 or something, so it was competing with the likes of Legend of Zelda, if you can believe it. Um, but definitely reminds me of that game a little bit too. Really cool game for the 2600 plus. Next game I want to play is Pac-Man. Of course, many of you know I grew up with this game. Um, a lot of people think this is a clunker. I actually like it because I grew up with it. It was my Pac-Man for my generation. We played it at home in our underwear and our dirty socks on that shag carpeting with the uh, wood paneled walls. Just a fantastic game, you guys. I really enjoy it. If it was called something else, it wouldn't have the stigma it has today. So definitely check this one out. I like it a lot. Very retro-y and cool. So, of course, I had to include Asteroids from 1980. I grew up playing this game. It is fantastic. In fact, I never played in the arcade until, like, the 90s, if you can believe it. It was too busy in the arcades when I was a kid still. But this version is just a classic for the 2600. It's great that we can play it on the 2600 Plus on new hardware. Just a fantastic game and a franchise. Um, and I'm glad to see um, it plays just fantastically here. Uh, huge piece of my childhood. I love Asteroids. Next game I want to uh, tell you guys about is The Challenge of Nexer. I talked about this on my Atari 2600 Plus review because I love it a lot. I also like Space Master X7. I didn't include that one just because I wanted to include others, but this is a really cool shooter. Um, I really enjoy this game with the little pseudo 3D elements. Um, it's also very 80s to me. I never had these as a kid, um, but just a really cool game. I really enjoy The Challenge of Nexer. Really, really fun. So next, we are playing Stargate. Now, I love Defender as well. This is basically Defender 2, right? Um, but I wanted to just include this one since I covered Defender already. Um, but just a really cool shooter. I really enjoy Stargate. This is a really cool version of it. Um, it includes the ability to um, rescue hostages and drop them back off on the bottom. This is a typical space shooter. Uh, one of Atari's most beloved games, Defender. This is kind of the sequel to that. This is Stargate. So check it out. So here we have a Magic's Moon Sweeper. And Magic had some really cool carts, games, and boxes. Their carts were all silver. And the boxes were silver. I love it. This is a really cool space shooter. I love me some Moon Sweeper. Um, definitely check out all of the Magic's titles, though. This one's really fun. This one has hostages you can rescue as well. Um, pretty neat. All right, next up we have Junior Pac-Man. I covered this one along with Miss Pac-Man, um, my 2600 plus review and Pac-Man. I decided to not include Miss Pac-Man just because I had so much Pac-Man already. But uh, this is a really advanced version of Pac-Man pretty much for the 2600. Um, keeps me coming back for more. Is definitely like the arcade version of Junior Pac-Man in so many ways. Um, just such a really cool version of Pac-Man. Probably one of my favorites on the whole system. So check it out, guys. So whenever I was going to choose my favorite 30 games to play <clears throat> on the 2600 plus, it was, I mean, I was, I'm faced with like a hundred games I love. So it's really hard to include, um, you know, 
everything. I couldn't include Missile Command. I already talked about it as well in my review. So I wanted to give you a taste of some different games more than games I've already talked about, even though a lot of them are my favorites too that I've had in my review. So uh, just FYI. So um, I typically have my 2600 plus in here uh, behind my chair in my recording lounge area. Um, the controller is just like the original i mean it down to everything it's perfect and uh here's the console itself with the lit up logo um this is where i mostly play my games like mr run and jump um however i did my recordings in my living room which you'll see me do a lot of my show today from um but uh yeah just some cool games and i'm hoping you like my choices i tried to give you a nice variety river raid is just such a classic this was designed by carol shaw uh, one of the female Atari programmers. Uh, she just made some incredible games. Um, I love me some River Raid. Uh, this is also great on the 5200 and the um, 800 computers as well. Uh, just such a classic game. I'm always drawn to this one. It's so simple and fun. Let me know what you think down below. So Frostbite by Activision, I also covered my 2600 plus review. I just could not leave it out again. So uh, this is just a really cool game. Basically, you're hopping on little icebergs, changing the colors of them. You're collecting fish for bonus points, avoiding other creatures like these uh, terrible little seagulls or whatever those are. And you're basically building an igloo. And once the door appears, you can go right inside to get bonus points. Such a cool game. I really enjoy it. So next up, of course, I have to tell you about Millipede. Millipede was a really fantastic Atari 2600 game. Of course, it's based on the popular arcade game Millipede, which is a sequel of Centipede. Uh, just such a great game. This is my favorite version of any of the Pede games. Um, I prefer Millipede over Centipede, as many of you know. This is just a faster version. I prefer this over the 5200 version, which is really clunky. This is a really fast, fun arcade shooter. So Cosmic Arc was probably one of my favorite Magic games. Basically, you are manning this UFO, shooting down enemies, and I always like to tell people it's like you're abducting cows on the screen. I just, it, it's more fun that way to me, just to call those cows, even though they're, they're not in the manual. Uh, just really neat. Of, of course, this game is tied to another one of Magic's games. Um, so uh, you'll have to find out by playing them all. Uh, really cool. I really enjoy Cosmic Arc. So Berserk Enhanced um, is an awesome game that came out in 2023 for the Atari 2600 Plus. I will cover this as well today in a game review. Um, so really neat. I love Berserk Enhanced. It's got the voice of the 5200 version, of course, of Evil Auto. And it's just really cool to be able to play it here on brand new Atari hardware. Gosh, I never thought I'd say that in my lifetime. <laughs> Next up, we have Bowling. Now, this is a favorite game of mine. I covered in my review as well. Um, just such a classic. I also love Video Pinball, which I'm not featuring here. Um, but just really cool games. I really enjoyed these. I played these to death when I was a kid. Um, and I also play them on my uh, new My Arcade devices as well. Um, just such a fun game. I always find myself drawn to all the time. So next up, guys, we have Vanguard. I actually did review this on that Atari show. I think that was for the 5200 version, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this is a fun game on the Atari 2600 Plus as well. Just a typical space shooter based on a popular arcade game at the time. You basically want to go down and get those little um, E or energy stores. And you become invincible for a little while. Um, such a fun, colorful shooter. I really enjoy Vanguard. So Quick Step is another interesting magic game that I love. Reminds me of Qbert a lot. Basically, this is a two-player game. You can play against the computer or another person. Playing against another person might be preferable. The computer AI in this is really tough to beat. Um, basically, you are descending these stairs here. You have powers where you could take one away or make that person stick for a while. Very, very competitive and fierce. I really enjoy it, though. It's simple. I like the graphics, too. So, of course, I had to include Frogger, 
uh, from Parker Brothers. I had this as a kid. Um, I loved the arcade version of Frogger. Also, there's Frogger 2 3 Deep or 3 Deep for the 2600 as well, which Ferg reviewed on the 2600 podcast. Check it out. I did my uh, review for that in his podcast too. Um, such a cool game. I love the original though. There's just nothing like it for the 2600. I'm taken back immediately to 1984 when I play this. So cool. Next up is Miner 2049er. If you can afford a rare Atari cartridge, this is the one I would definitely get. Uh, there were many Donkey Kong type style games out at the time. Um, this one's a famous Atari game, of course, on the com- um, 8-bit computers as well. Um, and the 5200. Uh, just really cool. I really enjoy Miner 2049er. Yes, got him. <laughs> I love it. Okay, next, guys, we have Lost Luggage. I featured this in my 2600 Plus review as well. I think this is such an underrated game. Got a lot of crap back in the day. Back in the day as in like 15-something years ago on YouTube by certain people. But uh, I I really enjoy it. If it wasn't for those channels, I wouldn't have found out about it and loved it. Um, Basically, these little sky caps getting luggage. And if you miss one, that's what happens. You see all their unmentionables. If you can, definitely get a 7800 ProLine controller off of eBay. I think it's worth it. Get you some Q-tips and some some isopropyl alcohol to clean carts with. And I definitely think you'll find it's worth it. Um, love playing Desert Falcon on the 2600 Plus. It's so cool. All right, so we are off. And looking at 7800 games now. So this is Robotron 2084. This is an awesome adaptation of the popular RK game, of course. Uh, just a lot of fun. I really enjoy Robotron. Apparently, Jeff Mentor was inspired by this game as well. So much to where uh, it influenced his game designs. Um, this is the RK version I'm talking about, though. Um, this is a really cool port, though. I like it. So I'm a huge Dig Dug fan, as many of you know. I was a Dig Dug fanatic at Putt Putt for most of my life back in my childhood, right? Um, I shouldn't say most of my life. (laughs) Maybe 15 years of my life. I still love Dig Dug. I've got it on arcades around the house. It's one of my favorite franchises. I love Namco, too. What a great uh, story they have here, too, in this character. I just love these games. Okay, next we have Galaga. Now, I'm also a huge Galaga fan, of course. Um, I played it to death in 85 in East Texas and pizza joints and whatnot. Um, This is a great version of the game. Um, It is near perfect. There are some sound kind of glitches in it that I don't like um, or imperfections. Other than that, it is a great shooter for the 7800. I definitely recommend Galaga. What a classic this is, right? All right, so of course I had to show you Donkey Kong again. I featured this in my 2600 Plus review as well. Uh, Donkey Kong is a really fun game for the 7800. Um, this is the best version, the 2600 version, in my opinion. It just it's it's nothing like it. Um, uh, this is much more close to the arcade original. Um, I don't think this includes all the levels, though, from my understanding. Um, but this is a really good game. Now a CIB copy can cost you quite a bit on eBay, though, so keep that in mind. Next up, we have Food Fight for the 7800. I'm so glad we can play this game now on brand new hardware. Um, I actually have the replicate of this as well um, that came out. Um, just such a cool game. And, and there's also a brand new Food Fight uh, a culinary uh, game on the VCS. Definitely check it out. Um, really cool franchise. I'm glad to see that they kept this franchise going with culinary combat. Really neat. So Ball Blazer was an interesting game at the time, put out by Lucas Films. Apparently you were in the future, and this is the most popular game in the far future. And basically you're at these tournaments. What you want to do is score this ball through their goal. Um, such a fun game. This is also on the 5200 as well, and the 8-bit computer line too. So fun. This is the 7800 version. Yes, got it. All right, next we have Joust. 
Now, Joust is a great Williams game, guys. I love Joust. My favorite version is actually, I discovered the Atari ST version, which I played on my ST computer upstairs. Um, such a fun game. I love this franchise, too. Uh, so cool. I think I spent at least a year playing this game in my life, if not more. <laughs> That's how much I played it back in the day. I love it. Next up, we got Xenophobe. I did talk about this in my review, too. This is such a fun game, guys. I really enjoy it. Uh, you can play two-player, like the arcade version, right, with the other person at the bottom. Um, you're basically traveling around these different space stations, el eliminating enemies. Uh, and you have to find the way out of the space stations as well before they explode. Um, just such a fun game. I really enjoy Xenophobe. Check it out. It's one of the pricier carts, though, for the 7800. All right, and lastly, we have Desert Falcon. Um, this is such a fun game, you guys. I love Desert Falcon. Um, I think this came out in 87 or 88. It was kind of a later release, um, but just so fun. Also, check out the Fulton Brothers on YouTube. They do a deep dive on this game. Um, just such a fantastic franchise. I love Desert Falcon. Oh, I got four more guys. Hold on. So, of course, I had to include Asteroids for the 7800, guys. Um, this is such a cool game. I really enjoy it. Back in the day, it was called Asteroids 3D, I believe, before it was released. This is probably the best version of Asteroids, in my opinion. Um, I do like the Atari 8-bit version of Asteroids as well, although it can look pretty bland um, in comparison. Uh, this is probably the best version, as I said. Just such a classic game from back in the day. I love it. All right, my second bonus game is another 7800 game, Midnight Mutants. This is such a cool game, guys. I really enjoy it. Um, it can be a little difficult, but you're working um, alongside Grandpa, I think, from the Adams family. Or is it the monsters? I get them confused. Um, but just such a fun game. Cool platformer and a great game for Halloween time as well. All right, my third bonus game is Kaboom by Activision. Now, this game utilizes the paddle controllers on the 2600 Plus. This is such a great game. Now, this is actually kind of Activision's version of Avalanche, which was an Atari arcade game um, that had little snowballs in it. Um, such a neat game. One of my favorites for sure. I love, love, love this game. The 5200 version is probably my favorite, though, because it has classical music playing as you collect the bombs. So my fourth bonus game is Enduro by Activision. I just love Activision games, as you can probably see. I had this as a kid. I think it was Christmas of 83 or 84. Me and my sister got this, probably 83. Such a fun racer, probably the best racer on the 2600 plus. Um, it's got several, several different levels here. Um, just such a classic game that can't be beat. Definitely grab a copy of Enduro if you have not. Thanks guys. Awesome, guys. What did you think about my list? Um, so there are many more games I couldn't include. Um, I decided not to include Qbert again and some other ones that are my favorites as well. I wanted to give you kind of a different sampling of games as well as, you know, there's just some games I could not get away from, like Enduro, which I love with a passion. So um, go ahead and let me know down below what your favorite games are for the 2600 Plus. 7800 and 2600 games. I have a nice selection of both in this. So I'm um, excited. Let me know what you think. So for this game review, guys, I want to talk about two cool games that came out recently uh, by Atari for the Atari 2600 and 2600 Plus and compatible systems. And these are Mr. Run and Jump 2600 and Berserk Enhanced 2600. The, both of these games are released by Atari that around the same time the 2600 Plus came out. Of course, they're compatible. Um, so first, let's talk about Mr. Run and Jump. So this review is for both of these games. So in the back of the box, it says, Oh no, Leap the dog has been wandering toward the dark realm. And if he ventures too far, he'll never be able to find his way back. It's up to Mr. Run and Jump to race through six colorful worlds, bound over obstacles, dodge deadly enemies, and save his best friend before it's too late. 
So, of course, compatible with the 7800 as well, the 2600 and the 2600 Plus. So, um, if you saw my review of the 2600 Plus, I talked about these as well. So, one ding uh, for Atari was in this big box, there was no instruction manual, just the game in this little sleeve. Um, so, while I do like that, I do wish there was a manual in the box. I mean, we're paying for this box with nothing in it almost. Kind of weird, so I'm going to ding this for that as well. Um, so there was a game out for the VCS and major consoles for Mr. Run and Jump as well. It was Atari's first published game, I think, in like 40 years or something, that they actually made for the 2600 themselves. So, um, and published. To be fair, there is a limited edition and a standard edition for Mr. Run and Jump. I pre-ordered both. Of course, the standard came first. Uh, the limited edition does come with a manual <clears throat> and was a little bit more expensive, which I think is kind of silly. They should just include it in one copy. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that uh, pre-order trailer right here. What do I think about this game? Compared to the VCS game and the one that came out for major consoles, the more modern game, I obviously that's a much more fun game. Um, just reviewing this though for the 2600 plus, I feel like there definitely needs to be um, more music in the game. Uh, the music is very lacking in the game, except for the beginning and other parts. Um, I feel like the first level is extremely hard. Um, there are only six little worlds. Um, and some have said the game is short. Um, I do love the box art, however. I do love the uh, um, the platforming elements of the game. It definitely has a focus on that and the different traps. Um, so um, this game, um, I really wanted to like love this game. Um, I actually like the modern console version better, um, just my opinion. Um, it's hard to compare both, though, since this is running on 2600 hardware, right? Um, so for what it is, I think it's a good game. Um, it does need some sound. I wish it was a little bit longer. Um, I've got to like the third world. Things do get a little easier after the first world. But definitely, um, 
I would probably have to get Mr. Run and Jump for the Atari 2600 Plus a B plus. Um, and part of that is because there is no manual in the box. And I really hate that. Uh, cause I, I think it deserves to at least be an A minus. Right. But I'm dinging it for that because there's really, that's really uncalled for to charge fans for this big box with this cart with no manual. I think that's kind of silly. Um, so, but I think it's a cool platformer. Um, so also I wanted to talk about Berserk and Hans for the 2600, 2600 plus. So obviously this is a uh, Berserk with the voice added in like, we had on the 5200 version the back of the box says try to keep from going bonkers as you dodge robot fire and elude the robot gang leader evil auto your objective destroy robots rack up as many points as possible and stay alive as you move through a multitude of maddening berserk mazes and of course this is compatible with the 2600 2600 plus and 7800 <laughs> So this came out 2023 as well, and uh, my feelings about this game, I've always loved Berserk, and I love the 5200 version, and this marries both of them pretty much. And because of that, um, I am going to score it highly. However, also no manual in this new box, and I think that's a big waste, Atari. At least give us a three-page manual, something, um, just to have this in there and that's it. It's kind of silly to have this big box with this other little box in it. I think that's kind of silly. There's nothing in here. So um, because of that, I'm, I'm going to give this one also a B+. Plus. Um, it needs a manual. I do love the game, but as a package, it's really lacking in that other manual department, as it were. Um, so let me know down below what you guys think about these two games. I think they, they are really cool games for the 2600 plus as well. Um, and I would love to see Atari come out with some more of these. However, what I really want to see is an Atari 7800 joypad come out for the system. I, I did use my European original 20, uh, 7800 joypad. And we really need that accessory to come out Atari. I feel like the 2600 plus would benefit greatly from that because it does play 7800 games, but it but it can't play some of these games with the CX40 joystick because it's got one fire button. A lot of these games require two fire buttons. So um, the Ranger controller by Hyperkin does work on some games. However, I found using an original 7800 controller to be best. So uh, you could definitely search on eBay for that and get a 7800 Pro-Line controller or a Pain Line controller, as it were. Uh, let me know what you think about that and what other controllers you've tried as well. Um, I do have about 10 different controllers around the house. I tried the Joypad and the 7800 uh, Pro-Line controller um, and the Joy and the uh, the Ranger by Hyperkin. I tried those three. And um, across the board, I found the 7800 controller to be the most reliable So uh, for those 7800 games. Let me know what you think. So I'm scoring both of these games a B plus. I wish I could score them higher, but as far as the contents go in the boxes, I think not having a manual um, is kind of a bad call because we're paying 50, 60 bucks for these a piece. It's pretty high uh, entry point with no manual. I think that's kind of silly. Let me know what you think down below you guys and definitely check out Mr. Run and Jump and Berserk Enhanced. I think they are cool games. I would have given them an A minus had we a manual in the boxes. So uh, just FYI Atari. <laughs> I 
I wanted to give another shout out to High Retro Game Lord for this creator space. A fantastic YouTuber who's covered a variety of consoles and gameplay uh, from, gosh, he's been on since at least 2010, I think. Uh, just such amazing Atari content as well for the most obscure games you can think of. He's probably played them. Um, just really, really cool. Check out his page. I have used some of his footage in the past and given him credit um, and gotten his permission. But uh, just such a really cool creator. Look at all these awesome game reviews in here and gameplay. It's mostly gameplay. He does have some longer form RPG videos as well. Um, just so neat. Here's a list of all his Atari stuff. Just look at all this. Just amazing. What do you think, guys? Thank you so much for what you bring to the community, Hi Retro Game Lord. We really appreciate you. Keep the good Atari fun coming. I also wanted to give a special shout out to YouTube user Mac Cara. Um, <clears throat> this user has some awesome Atari content. Um, their name is spelled M A Q K A R R A. And they also have a 2600 plus unboxing. They also feature Mr. Run and Jump and Berserk Enhanced Edition. Uh, so definitely go and check out their page. Um, this is a, it's a Spanish language page, of course. But uh, of course, uh, lots of content that you can watch. You don't need um, the language there to see that. Some awesome gameplay. Definitely check out Mac Cara. Just some fantastic content. And please go subscribe to his page today. Thank you, Mac Cara. It's game over time, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, thank you also for um, allowing me to be in a different area for this Bad Atari show. Um, just over here, editing games on a Sunday and been really busy, so I just decided not to move. So um, I hope you enjoyed my picks for my top 2600 plus games. There are some amazing ones. I didn't feature Tempest. As you see on my dad hat here, I didn't feature a lot of games, which I'm sure are your favorites too, just because I could only pick 30. That's all I had time for. But there were so many games I wanted to pick. I'm thinking of them right now, you know, as well. Um, I like Barnstorming as well. That's a fun one. And uh, Midnight Magic. Um, there are so many cool games uh, that I didn't get to. Hopefully I'll get to them in the future. I'll do a part two with 30 more games. How about that? Um, so also go check out my review of the 2600 plus. It was awesome. Such a great system. I love it. Definitely go out and get you one today. They are fantastic. All right, guys. So coming up next on that Atari show, it's all about the Atari 400 mini. Here's a little promo and thank you guys. Have a great new year. Um, uh, be a good person, get your Java and go play some freaking Atari. We'll see you guys later. Bye now. Oh, and go get you some isopropyl alcohol to clean those carts with because you don't want to put dirty carts in a brand new Atari 2600 Plus, right? We'll see you guys later. Bye now. Peace. The Atari 400 Mini. What's it all about? Let's peel back the covers on this baby and take a look on the next That Atari Show. You are watching Ballistic Hot Hot Hot.
You are, you are watching, watching Ballistic, Ballistic Coffee, Coffee Boy. Boy.